Welcome to Unshakable Grace, where faith meets everyday life. I'm Pastor Mark Carlson of Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Kettering, Ohio. I'm thrilled to embark on this journey of inspiration, growth, and unwavering faith with you. Join us as we explore the boundless depths of God's grace that sustains us through our trials, empowers us in our successes, and transforms our hearts. Each episode, we'll dive into biblical insights, real life stories, and practical wisdom that remind us of the unshakable foundation we have in Christ. So tune in, open your heart, and let's experience the unshakable grace that shapes our lives. It's time to dive in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I bid you a good day. Welcome to Unshakable Grace. I want to make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, remembering who we are as the baptized, blood-bought, bound for heaven, sons and daughters of the Lord. It's my privilege and joy to share these 15 minutes, approximate 15 minute devotional times. And today we continue with the high priestly prayer of John chapter 17. We're at the end of the high priestly prayer in reading verses 24 through 26. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Whenever, wherever, whomever, as you're coming into this time with me, please note this high priestly prayer has been the focus over the last several weeks. John chapter 17, the high priestly prayer lifted in some three minutes and 30 seconds if you're simply reading it maybe a little bit longer but it's only the longest printed or recorded prayer of jesus three minutes and 30 some seconds i would say for 33 years our lord and savior jesus was in constant communion and dependency upon the father as well as the holy spirit so 33 years of constant communication and communion we have some 38 times recorded in the new testament when jesus is praying but none quite so beautiful as what we have here in john chapter 17. I want to highlight for you that during the course of this prayer, Jesus addresses the Father several times, and not always in the same manner. So in chapter 17 here, the high priestly prayer, Jesus says, Father, the hour has come in the very first part of his prayer. As he goes on, he once again says, And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory. And as he goes on in the prayer, in the 11th verse, we see him say, Holy Father, Holy Father. We see once again him address the Father in verse 21 as it states there, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me. And then once again in verse 24, Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me. And then finally, O righteous Father, O righteous Father, Holy Father, Righteous Father, as we're taught by our Lord in the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. 
So, the Father, holy and righteous and loving, loving, of course loving, as we look at Jesus addressing the Father in these ways, I believe we need to see that he truly is Holy Father, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, he is the Holy Father. The only true and triune God is who we're talking about here. And as he is addressed as a righteous father, righteous and just, holy and just and righteous, and let's say loving again. A loving, you cannot reduce God down to simply love. We have the scripture that states God is love, but you cannot reverse it like the Unitarian Universalist Church does to say love is God. All that God is, is love. No, God is not just a loving God. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a just God. And a loving God must also be a holy and righteous and just God. And so as our Lord and Savior Jesus is praying to the Father, he lifts up a prayer here that we find so important. The glorification of God's name, the manifestation of God's name, the, the sanctification of God's people, and also the unification, the unity of God's people. And finally, in the glories of heaven, experiencing the love of God as his love is within us and around us. So the, the loving, holy, and righteous Father. And who are we? Well, I love the fact that as Luther explains in the small catechism, he is our dear Heavenly Father, and we are his dear children. Beloved children of God, dearly loved children of God. And how has God made known to us his love? He's made it chiefly known to us in his Son, Jesus Christ. So note how this love is between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit from before the foundations of the world. So I would consider with you that it is eternal without beginning and without end. Eternal and everlasting. His love, his unconditional, his perfect his divine love, it's the agape love. So we know the four different words for love would be highlighted in terms of Holy Scripture. Eros, the physical, sensual love that is a gift of God to be shared in the bounds of marriage. And then the phileo, the, the love that would be there in terms of a brotherly love, the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, a phileo love. And that's storge, the Greek word for familial love, parent to child, child to parent, siblings sharing in this love between themselves. But this love we're talking about here is agape love. I love hearing of the definition of A-G-A-P-E, agape. That's not how we pronounce the Greek word for love, agape, but the English word agape, A-G-A-P-E, with mouth wide open, agape. Yes, this amazing, miraculous love of God causes a jaw-dropping moment for all of us, our mouths in shock are wide open. That he would love us so beautifully, so unconditionally. The love of God. So, 
as verse 23 is stating in John chapter 7, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. What a beautiful expression of love that you would know, that I would know, that we would know, that we are loved to the same degree that the Father loves the Son and the Son loves the Father. And that this love that we have, that's been in existence from the foundation of the world would continue on. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will endure forever. And not only does his word endure forever, but his love, his love endures forever. It's not just any old love. It's his love. It's God's love, this agape love that is so enduring, so enduring of our sinfulness. And it's an everlasting it's a forever love that we get to experience and share in in the kingdom of God forever. What a beautiful love. So, loving Father, Holy Father, righteous Father, He is a loving God and He has made known to you and I His love. And we've received it. We've believed it that it was his love that led him to send his only begotten son and we receive him. And we are beloved. We are dearly loved as his children. A yearning for love on the part of our Savior Jesus in this beautiful high priestly prayer. And as he prays, he's always willing to be the answer to his prayer. And what a beautiful answer he is in answer to his yearning for love and his prayer for love as he expresses greater love has no one than this, than to give his life for his friends. And he gives his life in love for his enemies. He loves us despite our sinfulness, despite our shortcomings we are dearly loved as has been said on his dresser if there is a dresser is your picture and my picture and he is a god who individually knows us loves us and endures our sinfulness pray with me dear lord thank you for loving us so much thank you for your perfect love make your love perfect in us that we might be your vessels we are one in the bond of love thank you for that unity and oneness that we have in your love and may we be used by you to bring countless others into experience your great love your love higher wider longer deeper as the apostle paul prayed for the church of ephesus so may we also come to understand the depth of your love and that we're right in the center of your love. Your love is targeted and, and aimed uh, at us. May we receive it, believe it, experience it, and pass it on to others. We ask and pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a doubly blessed and highly favored day. We'll see you again with another unshakable grace in the future.